This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. This is the March 7th, Thursday edition of the show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me online on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures. Or you can go over to Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything. Or just go to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything else you need there, YouTube, podcast, different articles that we write and whatnot. Everything is on the site, winningcureseverything.com. So go check that thing out. Uh, The rundown for today's show, we got two things. One, Will Wade caught on another wiretap. We'll talk about LSU basketball, what this means and whatnot. And we've got college basketball picks. So uh, the show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can go check them all out over at tunicatravel.com. So go check that thing out. Check out all the different ones that they've got. They're all wonderful. Chris and I, my other host, will be at Samstown Casino in Tunica Thursday, March 21st, and Friday, March 22nd for the opening round of the NCAA tournament. Could not be more excited. The round of 64 where everything goes crazy and you've got upsets and and whatnot. You've got 16 games a day. We're broadcasting live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter on those days starting at 10 a.m. So get out to the Sportsbook. They're opening up an hour early for us to broadcast. You can come in and get your bets in before the 11 o'clock tip-off. Come hang out with us at Samstown. We're going to be spending the night there on Thursday night. We're going to be there all day Thursday, all day Friday. We're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to have a good time. So if you're coming in from out of town, hit us up. Let us know you're coming. Uh, there's a Facebook event for it, so go check out facebook.com slash everything. Hit us up on Twitter, whatever. Just let us know whether or not you're coming out because we would love to see you. We'd love to shake your hands, tell you thank you for the support. So let's dive into today's main topic. Will Wade caught on another wiretap. Uh, this is a 2017 phone conversation. This article was put up on Yahoo, and it was done by some pretty heavy hitters. Dan Wetzel, Pat Forty, Pete Thamel, three guys that know their stuff, that don't post articles unless they have direct sources, right? Unless they trust their sources, they know what they're getting. This is from a 2017 phone conversation intercepted by the FBI between LSU coach Will Wade and basketball middleman Christian Dawkins. Dawkins is the one that's on trial here, okay? Um, Wade is speaking freely about, quote, a strong-ass offer he made in the recruitment of a prospect. Uh, here is what the, the call says. Uh, I was, this is Wade talking. I was thinking last night on this smart thing. I'll be honest with you, I'm effing tired of dealing with the thing. Like, I'm just effing sick of dealing with the S. <laughs> like, this should not be that effing complicated. Uh, so the smart thing, Javante Smart, freshman guard, he was a top 50 recruit last year from Baton Rouge. He made visits to USC, UCLA. He had offers from Alabama, you know, uh, numerous other places. Um, but we'll continue on. Uh, dude, so Wade is still talking to Christian Dawkins. He said, I went to him with a effing strong-ass offer about a month ago. Effing strong. The problem was... I know why he didn't take it now. It was effing tilted toward the family a little bit, Wade continued. It was tilted toward taking care of the mom, taking care of the kid, like it was tilted towards that. Now, I know for a fact he didn't explain everything to the mom. I know now he didn't get enough of the piece of the pie in the deal. Dawkins responded by saying, hmm. So Wade continues and says, it was a effing hell of a, well, (laughs) it was a effing hell of a effing offer, Wade continued. Hell of an offer. Okay, Dawkins said. Especially for a kid who's going to be a two- or three-year kid, Wade said. Uh, JaVale's, or, uh, uh, sorry, Smart is uh, is averaging 11.4 points a game for LSU this season. Uh, there are no specifics about the offer, right? And if you want to get technical, no, they can't prove exactly what the offer was. But he's talking to Dawkins about this. I, I need to explain this for some people that, that don't quite understand what's going on. The FBI is not targeting schools. They're not going after schools. They are going after agents 
shoe companies, the the seedy, shady backroom guys, the background guys in college basketball. Now, why they decided to do this, I have no idea. Unless the NCAA has friends in very high places, which they, they might. Um, the assistant coaches that are they're getting in trouble and that are talking to the FBI uh, that were actually charged with, with crimes and whatnot, they were charged with taking bribes from these agents, from these shoe companies, to help influence and steer these kids towards financial advisors, agents, shoe companies, etc. So that's where all of this comes in. The FBI did not subpoena Will Wade. They did not subpoena Sean Miller. The defense did. What these guys, Christian Dawkins and James Gatto and, and everybody else, Gatto, however you want to say it, moral code, what they are charged with is basically defrauding universities. What the FBI is saying is you guys made these kids ineligible, which in turn hurts the athletic program, and the athletics program didn't know about it, and the school didn't know about it, and they're having to vacate wins and pay off fines and all this kind of stuff. What Dawkins and Gatto and and that bunch are saying is we didn't defraud anybody. There is no fraud committed here. There's no conspiracy to commit fraud. They knew what was happening. We were talking to them about money. We were talking to them about paying players, and they know that those are NCAA violations, but they were willing to do it anyway. That's what the deal is here. So for everybody that thinks that the FBI was going after LSU or going after Arizona or going after USC or Miami or whoever, they go. They don't go after anybody. They get wiretaps on Dawkins and that bunch. It wasn't the other way around. They weren't looking for Will Wade. Will Wade just happened to be the person that was talking to Dawkins. And the FBI didn't even care about bringing them in. It was more or less the case was built against Dawkins, and Dawkins wants to show, hey, we didn't defraud anybody. Will Wade knew that we were paying players. Will Wade was okay with paying players. He was helping do it. That's the deal. So, in all of this, more than likely, with as damning as this uh, this transcript is, I would guess that Will Wade probably has coached his last game at LSU. Just, to, I mean, he might coach on Saturday against Vanderbilt. We'll see. Uh, last year, Arizona suspended Sean Miller and then brought him back later on in the year. But, I mean, Sean Miller's still not quite clear out of this whole thing. He, he got to coach another season. But with Will Wade, it is more than likely going to be we're going to suspend him, we're going to you know investigate, see what happens, and then go from there. This is a crazy situation. Absolutely insane, and I can't begin to to figure out uh, how many coaches it's going to be. I mean, the defense attorneys in this process, uh, this is what the article says, defense attorneys are in the process of formally filing subpoenas for both Wade and Arizona coach Sean Miller to testify for the defense at the second trial. Haney said he might try to bring in other coaches to the witness stand. As many as I can get in the courtroom, Haney said, we are going to pull back the curtains. Uh, the defense will try to show through wiretap phone calls and direct testimony from college coaches uh, that Dawkins and Code were not attempting to bribe the coaches to gain an inside track on signing their NBA-bound talent. The second trial will be an argument over the facts of the government's case, which we dispute, Haney said. Uh, namely, if Dawkins and Code were attempting to bribe coaches, why wouldn't the subject have come up on wiretap when they were discussing recruits? So that's what it is as far as the assistant coaches. The other side of this is they are not... There, there's no fraud, right? There's no fraud. Dawkins, a middleman or a basketball middleman with deep connections to grassroots hoops, and Merle Code and Adidas consultant are facing federal bribery charges in that trial. Three co-defendants who worked as an assistant co- or worked as assistant college coaches: Tony Bland of USC, Emmanuel Book Richardson of Arizona, and Lamont Evans of Oklahoma State have all reached plea agreements in the deal. Uh, Dawkins Code and Adidas executive James Ghetto 
were found guilty during the scandal's first trial in October. Um, on Tuesday, Ghetto was sentenced to nine months in prison. Dawkins coach uh, Code each received six-month sentences. A call between Dawkins and Wade also emerged during the first trial. Um, basically, that was the one that everybody kind of, I'm not going to say freaked out about, but what they discussed at first, which was, uh, hey, I got to shut the door. You know, Will Wade said that. I got to shut the door and said, I can get you what you need, but it's got to work. Like, do you want the, the boss of whatever kid, the tall kid? And and then it goes from there. But all of this has to do with basically whether or not fraud was committed, whether or not there was actual bribery. And I don't think that there was, but if the FBI and the NCAA are in cahoots and they are actually somewhat working together to clean up this sport, then anything can happen with this. I never in a million years thought that the jury in Manhattan would have sentenced these guys to prison. But you start throwing out that guys can get prison time for paying recruits and the coaches might not get anything? You know, that's where it gets a little crazy. Now, as far as, well, Will Wade and Sean Miller could just go up and and plead the fifth. Well, you can do that. Or... You could just tell the truth. Either way, it's probably going to cost you your job, right? Uh, And other people have told me you're not going to fire a coach for pleading the fifth because at that point he doesn't offer up anything. Well, the NCAA has their own knowledge. The FBI has already released all of this stuff. What's to stop the FBI from bringing in the parents of the kids? You know, what exactly were you offered? At that point, you don't want to perjure yourself. You don't really want to lose your job. You see where I'm going with this? That's how it gets a little crazy. Um, If he pleads the fifth, if Will Wade decides to plead the fifth, there is so much damage done from the transcripts of this and from what will be released in that courtroom that it may not save him anyway. At least if you talk, you have a chance to talk your way out of it if nothing actually happened. If you just plead the fifth, you're basically saying you're guilty, but you don't want to indict yourself. Right? I mean, that's basically what the fifth does. And the NCAA, I I think people sometimes forget this, the NCAA is not a court of law. The NCAA can take whatever evidence they have, whatever they feel like they've got, and they can do whatever they want to with you. That's it. They can do whatever they want. They don't, they're, not a, they're a governing body, but they don't have any bosses. They don't answer to the, the judicial system. They don't answer to the FBI. They don't answer to the government. The NCAA is its own entity. It is ruled by all of the member institutions that set these guys to be the controller, the leader. For people that don't like the NCAA, get your school to pull out of it. Because they're part of the ones that make up this institution. That's the way it goes. All right, let's jump off of that. Let's get and do some college basketball picks. Uh, Got to get ourselves back off the mat because last night we went one and four. Went four and one the night before, two and one the day before that. Uh, we went five and four on Saturday, four and one on Friday, four and one on Thursday, and then last night was a one and four disaster. Uh, missed the Clemson game by one point. Marquette absolutely choked at Seton Hall. San Diego State looked like a disaster from the word go. And uh, and we would have won uh, the money line parlay had it not been for NC State choking at home to Georgia Tech. Just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. All right, so tonight I've got, uh, I've got five games against the spread, and then I have another money line parlay for you. Uh, this money line parlay not going to pay out as much, but it's the teams that I feel the most confident about. I'm putting a little more money on this one to get a better return on it. Uh, So let's go on and jump into the sides. First one up, Houston minus 13 at home against SMU. Houston is going to be pissed. They lost at home for the first time in, what, 33 games? Uh, So over over two seasons uh, to UCF on Saturday. SMU, a disaster, a dumpster fire. They have to get smoking hot 
in order to keep this game even close. I don't think they do that. They've been terrible all year. People still look at SMU as Larry Brown's team. They still think it's the the same bunch. Tim Jankovic, he's a good coach, but this year they just don't have the dogs to fight in this one. Houston minus 13 at home. I'm going to take UL Lafayette as a pick em at Arkansas Little Rock. Arkansas Little Rock, uh, 0-9 against the spread against teams like this in, in this situation. So I'm going to take uh, Lafayette in a pick em there. Indiana State, minus three against Valparaiso. Valparaiso has not covered in five straight games. Indiana State, I believe, three and two against the spread over the last five. Uh, once you get into conference tournament time, good against the spread teams, like good recent against the spread teams, against bad recent against the spread teams, you would think that the, the point totals and whatnot would get a little bit closer. They don't typically. It's like a 57% win rate against the spread for the, uh, for the better against the spread team over, down the stretch. Uh, so Indiana State minus three there. St. Peter's plus three at Marist. Uh, and it's not really at Marist. It's in the conference tournament, so whatever. Uh, but St. Peter's plus three against Marist. Uh, St. Peter's is awful, but they beat Marist twice this year. They are, they are a matchup nightmare for Marist. So St. Peter's plus three. Uh, Wisconsin minus six and a half uh, at home against Iowa. Iowa, their coach has been suspended for the last game and this game. In the last game, they got absolutely blown out at home by Rutgers. In this one, Wisconsin, I think, needs a good win heading into the conference tournament. Uh, Wisconsin has won four out of their last six games. The only two games that they lost were to, uh, who was it, Penn State, I think. No, 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 they beat Penn State. Uh, It was Michigan State and somebody else. Uh, But they lost both of those by two points last second. So, Wisconsin minus six and a half over Iowa. Uh, and then our money line parlay. Let's go on and jump into this. It's only three teams, Stanford, Wisconsin, and Houston. Those three teams guaranteed to win. It's minus 150. So, basically, you bet 15 bucks to, what, 10, uh, to, to get 10, win 10, whatever it is. I cannot talk today, I swear to you. Uh, but Stanford, Wisconsin, and Houston money line parlay minus 150. So put down 15 bucks, win yourself back 10 bucks, whatever it is, or whatever you want to put down, okay? 30 bucks to win 20, whatever. Uh, either way, you can find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Go up to the navigation bar and click on gambling picks. Or if you look in the description of this video, we're going to have you a link there so you can click on that very easily. Simple stuff. We will be back again tomorrow. As always, we love you guys. We appreciate the support. Thank you for coming in and watching every day. Share the show out. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on the podcast. Leave some comments. Tell everybody about the show. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.